Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed, and we're up in the radio shack, and we've got something new in the box to test today, but it's not a radio. Instead, it is a solder station. Now, if you're into the hobby of radio, unfortunately, there does come a point when you are going to have to do some soldering, even if you're not into modding radios. It's just general maintenance. Normally, it's things like mic pugs become loose, and the wires have to be resoldered. If you run a YouTube channel, even a small one like mine, and you stick with it, you do get contacted by suppliers quite regularly wanting you to test their products. And I have been contacted before for, for solder station uh, suppliers. I've turned them down, mainly because of the price. Normally they come on with the air wand for doing surface mount, but it's generally the price they were, I think, well over £150. Just felt that was too expensive for Fred in the Shed. This q 8 soldering station, which is temperature adjustable, when they told me the price, I couldn't resist it. And I went on to Amazon and checked, just, I couldn't believe it, £38 UK price for the whole thing with this <laughs> solder station. And today, when I'm making this video, I went on and with Amazon, Amazon's ever increasing discount system, this is currently on sale at £32.30. pence. Incredibly cheap, so couldn't resist it, had to get it in the shack. I'm not going to bore you with opening this box on camera. I believe there's a little bit of setting up to do. So we're going to take this downstairs on a table, set it all up. There's a couple of solder jobs I need to do uh, anyway. And let's see what we get for £32.30. I just can't believe that price. Anyway, let's get this set up downstairs. It's nice to see that everything is really well packed in the box with foam inserts, especially at this price point. There's a small bit of setting up to do. It's very basic. You simply need to screw on the rubber feet to the base. And then likewise, with the flexible helping hand arms, they screw on with a Phillips screwdriver. And then finally, the flexible magnifier. There we go, that's everything put together. The soldering iron wand itself, it is very, very light. The specs on this soldering iron, this is a 60 watt iron and the temperature range is 200 to 480 degrees C. It does come with five additional tips or nibs, if you like. The one supplied in the iron is a very, very fine point, very fine point. So I'm gonna swap that out. That'll be too fine for what I want to do. Of course, with any iron, you're going to have to replace these little tips at some point, and I'm not sure how readily available these will be. So I'm going to be using, I think, a slightly larger conical point for what I want to do. This is uh, very, very fine. To change the nib or tip, the whole top section of the iron unscrews, and then you take it off there, and there is your ceramic element. So you have to be a little bit careful with that because that'll be quite fragile. And then your new tip just goes on just like that. I'm not sure if that ceramic element is replaceable. Um, probably not at this price point. But as I say, the whole thing is just over £30. Yeah, and there you go. And that's good to go. Comes with this little holder system here. We have a wet sponge, which I prefer. And we have a ball of copper. Well, um, I'm, I'm not entirely sort of happy with this stuff myself, I know um, a lot of people like it. The idea being is you're going to sort of push the irons into it, so every time you extract it, in theory, it should clean the iron without cooling it down. Personally, I prefer to wet wipe on the sponge. I think it's quite nice, they supply you with some solder to get you going, and you've got a full pack here, 10 grams of 0.8 millimeter. Looks like it's, uh, what's that, tin and copper. It is resin core solder, so yeah, we'll probably be using that. Let's have a quick look at the main unit itself. Closer look at the controls. The um, stand is quite nice. Metal construction, the main unit, plastic, of course. We have a simple, Din socket here for the iron that goes in to the main control panel here. Uh, no, I can't see any, there's no locking ring or anything like that. So you simply push it in and that's it. I, I think that's fine if you're, only, if you're not going to be swapping this in and out. Perhaps if you're going to, you know, you pack it away, leave it on the bench. Personally, I think it would be nice if that would have had a locking ring. Controls on the main unit itself, there's no LCD display or anything like that for the temperature, but then you wouldn't expect it at this price point. 
Simple layout here, uh, scale in centigrade and also Fahrenheit from 200 all the way up to 480, 896 degrees Fahrenheit. Also I've noticed there's a little tiny indent now for a calibration screw so if you've got thermal, thermal equipment and, and you could measure the real temperature at the tip of the iron you could then calibrate this to get this completely accurate. But I think for most people you're just going to basically be turning this uh, up and down depending on the delicacy of the work that you're soldering. I think you've got a couple of choices here how you work with this unit. Uh, this is the control unit here, it slots into the base. Let me just show you that, there's a couple of little slots. Um, personally, I think I'm probably going to prefer this separate on the side. It has quite a nice angle to it so you can see the controls. As I say, the base itself, made out of metal, that's quite nice. And it does have these helping hands, and I think this is a real bonus for the system here. Um, they do flop about a little bit, but I might unscrew those at a later date and put in a little washer just to tighten, tighten that up. They're quite nice, actually. They, they have a protective piece of plastic on the grips there, which will stop it damaging any circuit boards anything like that and then you do get a little magnifying lens as well looks about a five times something like that it, it's a bit small to be honest and there's no LED work light which um, is a bit of a shame that would have been quite nice even at this price point but it's there and uh, yeah that will help you out when it comes down to some of the iron has warmed up we've increased the temperature to 375 degrees and then we're just gonna tin the tip for the first time Make sure we get some sold all the way around. Just do it a couple of times just to make sure that uh, everything's nice and tinned. Looking at this tip, I might actually have to swap down to a smaller tip. I've got a little Arduino Nano that I want to um, solder up. It's quite fine. We'll try, we'll try this tip, um, but I say I might just have to swap down to a, a smaller tip. So here we are, got the little Arduino, and we just need to solder on these pins here. Not so sure using this foam is such a good idea, but until I get the first couple of pins soldered, it's not going to be very stable. One thing I will say, yeah, I do miss a little LED work light in the magnifier, and I do think the little magnifier lens could yeah, just be a little bit bigger, but we can't get everything, can we? Now, don't judge me on my soldering, because my soldering skills are very basic, very amateurish. Um, so if I can use this, I'm sure that you can, but uh, anyway, wish me luck, let's see how we get on. So all done, no problems at all. Felt quite confident with that iron. I think I could have gone down to one of the smaller needle points and my soldering skills aren't very good. I'll see if I can get this under the magnifying lens and we can have a closer look. And there we go, hopefully you can see a bit more. Um, I don't think I've done too bad, first time I've used the iron. And to give you a comparison, there's my, there's my fingernail. So that was quite fine soldering. And even with that slightly larger point, may have used a little bit too much solder, that's what I normally do. But yeah, overall, I'm quite impressed with that. That certainly has done the job rather well. I need to go ahead and solder the other side now. Do that off camera, and hopefully I've not melted these pins into this foam board. Yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. And then I've got another little job, a little repair job that I might as well do whilst I am set up, and then we can come to the conclusion part. So the next little job, are these Christmas tree lights which got what we call kennied 
our big Labrador run past, got these wrapped around his leg, tore it out the wall. And we use these around the room all year. And I, but I think there must be a break on this USB connector here because when you put them in and you bend them, they keep cutting out. So let's zoom in and have a look at that. So yeah, as I suspected, if you look just on the last two there, I can just see that they are fractured. So that just, those two there, that one and that one just need to be resoldered and uh, that should be good to go. So let's crack on and do that. I think I'll leave the same nib or same tip in the soldering iron. Probably could go down to the smaller one, but I'm quite confident now I've used the iron for the first time. So there we go, yeah, no trouble at all. I reflowed all four in the end just to be on the safe side. Yeah, right, let's zoom out and give my final conclusions. Final thoughts then on this K Wheats KOT936 station. Well, honestly, for the money that they're asking for it, I, I really can't criticize it to be honest. I mean, I know I keep banging on about it, but <laughs> £33.80 is it's ridiculously cheap and it works. It did a real good job on that nano there and that was quite fine work. Um, things I like about it, I, I love the fact that the base is rather solid and you do get these helping hands. This is so useful. Um, the temperature control, I, I, I didn't really test that fully. I, I know I did try it when it was on 200 and uh, when it went up to about 375 it worked. Again, I would need something like surface mount or whatever to really, really take that down. That's not really what I, what I do. The iron itself, or the wand if you like, it's very light in the hand. Um, yeah, okay, it, it does feel a little bit cheap compared to my Weller irons, but you get what you pay for and it seems to do the job. How long that ceramic element is going to last, I honestly couldn't tell you. But yeah, it works absolutely fine. Criticisms, um, not many at this price to be honest. The magnifying lens is very useful. It is plastic, of course. Um, I wish it was maybe just a little bit bigger, and I do wish that they had fitted an LED light in the bottom there, even if it was just on a little cell battery. That um, that would give you that little bit extra illumination on your work. Or even maybe if there was a, a slightly better model, a deluxe model that had a larger glass lens, I would certainly pay an extra five, six, seven pounds, whatever it was, to get that. But I mean, you know, overall, I've got a big, large magnifying lens that I'll probably end up using, using myself. I think it's nice that if you've never sold it before, you're an absolute beginner, straight out of the box, you're up and running. I just used this lead-free 0.8 millimeter solder on the job, and it flowed, and it worked rather nice. Kate Weeks even supplied me for the review um, four little rolls of solder there, all different sizes, didn't uh, didn't have to use them. I think these are available on the website and they're pretty cheap. I think they're about eight pounds or something for four rolls of solder. Also, very, very good that they do provide six different tips there from a massive heavy, heavy chisel head that would probably be used for doing an antenna coaxial plug all the way down to fine points that, uh, yeah, you could do surface mount work if you've got a very steady hand. So yeah, it's good to go straight out of the box. I'd like to thank K Wheats for sending this into the shack for review. Um, I'm not on any commission. I don't work for them. I'm not any kickback. So I'll try and make the review as honest as I can. If you're interested in looking further into purchasing one of these, there is an Amazon link. I will leave it in the description. It's about £38 full price at the moment. As always with Amazon, it's probably an idea to put it in your watch list and then leave it for a few days because quite often they'll put a 15 or 20% discount and it does become even cheaper. So that's it for the video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. There's the thumbs up from Fred in the Shed. If you get a second before you go, just hit me a thumbs up down below. I really would appreciate that. But as now, as always, please, please, please look after each other. Take care, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers for watching.